My name is Gabe Gregoratos. I am 93 years old, soon to be 94. I'm a retired physician cardiologist, spent 20 years in the U.S. Army and 20 plus more years at the University of California. I have been retired uh, totally uh, for about five or six years now. And I'm living at the Carlisle, which is a retirement community, or more accurately, a residential care facility for the elderly. We moved in here, uh, my wife and I, in 2011. At that time, we were in our 80s, early 80s, and we were totally independent and healthy. But uh, my wife, who has worked in long-term care facilities for 22 years or so, was keenly aware that once people get into their 80s, unexpected health uh, issues arise. And one of the main reasons that we moved at the time was because we wanted to move on our own terms. Uh, if one uh, gets disabled or has a major health issue, then uh, he or she is not in control anymore. And uh, uh, one's children or friends or even strangers uh, take on the responsibility of moving that person as necessary. So we didn't want that. We wanted to be in charge of our destiny, so to speak. Uh, and we thought moving to the Carlisle uh, as independently living people uh, was a good way to go. Now, when one moves into such a facility, uh, uh, there are several things that need to be considered. We wanted to move into a facility that allowed us totally independent living and yet allowing us to age uh, in, in place. So we could live 10, 12, 15 years, whatever, independently. But then if we needed help with any of the activities of daily living, we would have uh, uh, people on site who would provide the help. There are many advantages we found living in a facility like this. Number one, you have the security. Number two, you have uh, uh, generally a friendly uh, group of people uh, under similar circumstances that you establish new relations and new friendships. Uh, you get rid of the responsibilities of house ownership and all the chores that go with it. You get rid of having to cook every day, uh, do laundry every day, and so on and so forth. And there, of course, there are disadvantages. Uh, you, when you move into a facility like this, uh, you exchange the freedom and total independence or being in your own home to living in a regulated and structured environment. And one has to be flexible, uh, otherwise one would be very unhappy living in this type of setting. So we moved to the Carlisle, as I said, 11 years ago, totally independent. And we were able, since at that time, to take uh, many trips and travel throughout the world. The first year we were here, we traveled to Madagascar, uh, spent a wonderful two and a half weeks exploring uh, a rather primitive island. We also took two cruises to the Far East, a couple of river cruises uh, to Europe, in Europe, and uh, traveled locally with our family, spent family holidays, uh, 
at Lake Tahoe or up in Sonoma, where we were able to rent a big house and have the whole family join us for a few days. We have not been constrained uh, being here. And we still try to keep us close to our original way of life as possible. And that is a very important thing. One, even though one moves into a, a retirement home, it's very important that one keeps his usual life activities and his outside friends and so on. Uh, you don't want to become isolated even though you have local new friends. You don't want to lose all your contacts from old friends. For example, just last Sunday, uh, the daughter of a good friend of mine, whom I've known since 1959, another doctor, he and I trained together, and who lives in a similar retirement facility, uh, drove him up from Palo Alto to San Francisco, and we had lunch together and reminisced about old times. So it's very important to keep track keep in touch with uh, old friends. Another activity that we participate and many residents like and participate are exercise classes, uh, yoga and tai chi. And my wife and I continue to go to yoga three or four times a week to keep as limber as we can. For us, for my wife Eva and myself, uh, we're still very happy to be here. We are comfortable. My wife has lost uh, her eyesight completely uh, since we moved here. But being in a place that she's familiar with, that has helped a great deal. She didn't have to learn how to navigate a new apartment or the entire new building. We continue to be largely independent, uh, so we have not availed ourselves of any of the assisted living services, but I can expect to need some help in the not too distant future. So we are very happy to be here in this type of an environment. We, we feel secure and well taken care of. Both Eva and I continue to be as active as we can. Uh, we drive to church. Uh, we drive to see our children. Uh, we even drive to the symphony. But we have changed our tickets from evening performances to matinees, as we don't feel comfortable walking around uh, the civic center uh, at night. Uh, we are actively participating in the Writers' Workshop, which is an activity that several of the residents participate in, and we enjoy very much. And some of the things that we wrote have been uh, published in the Carlisle Chronicle or the CRA newsletter. And uh, that's what keeps us off the streets. Uh, during COVID, where we were, our activities were very restricted for about eight months or so, Eva and I started a new project. Uh, during our many travels over the years, Eva kept voluminous handwritten notes about the travel. And uh, while we were doing nothing, staying home, we deciphered the handwritten notes. Uh, Eva got a helper to type them up. And then we combined the text of, uh, that, we, that Eva had written with photos that I had taken into a book. So, so far we have created seven books of travels uh, to Africa, 
uh, China, uh, Europe, uh, and other places. Many people find living in facilities like this very important. Uh, one of the worst things, in my opinion, that elderly people can do is stay alone in a big home uh, without help on site. Uh, there was a recent study, very recent as a matter of fact, the CDC published that loneliness is one of the major reasons elderly people don't do well. And that is one thing that one can avoid by moving into a retirement home with or without uh, assisted living. The retirement homes and facilities like this can be divided into three categories, actually four. Independent living, uh, residential care facilities, uh, memory care units, and uh, skilled nursing facilities. Independent living have a special license uh, called CCRC, Continuing Care Retirement Community, and that's an independent retirement community. And an RCFE license. RCFE meaning Residential Care for Elderly. And the difference between independent living and RCFE facilities are that in RCFE facilities, people can get help with uh, activities of daily living. People can get help with showers, dress, uh, transportation, and so on. But that doesn't preclude people who don't require assistance who are independent living from moving in here. And uh, recently, many of the people who moved here are independent living. And that was the, the whole concept, why it was nice to have uh, a facility with both independent and assisted living. People who need medical care then go to a different level of care called skilled nursing facility where nurses, RNs, LVNs provide injections, feedings, uh, and other medical type uh, help. Memory care facilities cater primarily to elderly people whose memory is not good who may have various degrees of dementia, and they provide activities designed to keep them engaged and uh, keep the brain as active as possible and slow down the progression of the disease. So those are the four levels of care that I think are available in most areas.